begin by removing any cases protecting the iPad. I will leave it up to you if you feel a protective screen needs to be removed if one is present. Make sure the iPad is turned off during this process and make sure not to turn it on until the repair is completed. Use pressurized air or a vacuum to remove any loose glass on the iPad. Use a heat gun to loosen the adhesive around the bezel and a prying tool to lift the glass. Be extremely careful not to allow the pry tool to pass beyond the border of the screen while lifting the glass. You may damage the LCD beneath otherwise. Evenly distribute heat with the heat gun. Holding it in one place for too long can cause damage to the LCD beneath. Carefully pry the glass away from the bezel using plastic picks as needed to separate the glass from the adhesive. Mind the LCD panel beneath. Notice this ribbon to the left. This will be cut. Make sure the replacement front panel you purchase had this connection prior to severing this ribbon. Note the magnet needed for smart lock to function. I would suggest to remove this at this time. There is another on the same side on the bottom portion of the iPad covered with black adhesive. Remove any glass shards that did not come up with the glass when first lifted. Remove any residual adhesive that remains on the bezel. Use a vacuum or pressurized air to remove any residual glass in and around the iPad bezel. Unscrew and remove the four screws holding the LCD panel. Now we lift the LCD. Please be very careful when doing this. Move the LCD very slowly on both sides. If you have two spudgers, use both to push them towards the bottom of the iPad on both sides of the LCD to lift off the back plate below the LCD. You don't want to crack the LCD. This will add about another $40 to your project. Remove the 16 screws holding the back plate. Then lift the back plate, minding the notches in the iPad bezel. There are magnets near the edge of the left hand side of the iPad. Hang on to your screws, they're tough to grab otherwise. Use a tweezer if needed.
Remove the connectors for the digitizer and the LCD. I would recommend that you use your fingernails for this. Be very gentle. These connections are commonly broken when removing and reinserting the connector. This has been a costly repair for me many times. Please check that all connections are still in place by looking very closely at the connector. Separate the two adhesive strips at the bottom of the LCD. Make sure not to damage these. There is a pad on the adhesive strip that acts as a separation point for the LCD and the digitizer panel. Finally, remove any additional particles from the iPad bezel. Note the adhesive strips on the old iPad. Depending on the digitizer replacement you bought, you may need to transfer these strips to the new digitizer. I don't need to remove these strips for the digitizer I have, but I am showing you the process regardless. Re-affix the digitizer. Re-affix the LCD and then the battery. Re-affix the panel that covers the LCD and the digitizer. Note the length of the screws. Set the back panel back into place and re-affix the 16 screws. Note that the indented holes should be facing towards you. The two longer screws go to the bottom right of the iPad as shown in this video. Carefully flip the LCD panel down. Re-affix the adhesive strips at the bottom of the LCD. These have the separator pads. Secure the LCD with the four screws that were removed. Carefully remove the adhesive backing from the digitizer with a razor. The bottom piece is the hardest to remove due to the data ribbon that connects to the iPad. I stick a plastic pick between the film of the LCD to prepare for a quick removal of the film of the digitizer and then the LCD. I do this to limit the amount of dust and lint that will settle on the surfaces. Press firmly on the edges of the display and apply heat as needed to affix the replacement screen securely. Power on the unit and admire your handiwork. Enjoy.